Hey folks, so today I just want to explain, well start off by explaining how I make my templates um, and why I do it this way. Um, okay, so I always make cardboard templates for my knives. Uh, there's loads of ways to do it and I've seen um, various people doing various different ways. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if I've seen anyone else doing it in cardboard. So, the reason I do this is because it gives you like a physical item, although it doesn't exactly resemble how the knife will feel in the end, you get like a really good idea before you cut into any steel or waste any materials. Just get some scrap cardboard and um, go at it. So it's a great technique if you're a novice knife, knife maker and in this case if you're doing a sort of novelty design which I'm trying out. Um, so if you've already got knife designs you like doing and stuff you might not need to do this for basic tweaks and stuff like that but um, Anyway, for me it really works, and you really quickly get an idea of some, whether something will work or not. So I'll just show you what I've been up to. Um, it's my friend. Once. Um, a kitchen axe. So here's an axe I restored a while ago. Um... So yeah, a kind of a novelty item. I don't. There is going to be a trade-off between the asset, aesthetics, like the looks of it, and the functionality, um, because obviously people don't really use axes in the kitchen um, unless they're savages. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll show you what I've been cooking up. Okay, so we start off here where I started my journey here, which is my cleaver design, which is the sort of closest thing to an axe that I've made, I guess. And got some cardboard, and I'm thinking to make the blade more axe like, and the handle. Um, I was sort of, I hadn't even looked at an axe, I just thought, I don't know why I thought that now, I think an axe kind of goes either way, anyway, and it's too much, as soon as you pick this up, maybe for a pinch grip, it might be alright, but I don't know if it's going to be used like that, and um, I normally use a bit stiffer cardboard as well actually, so you get a better idea of um, but I couldn't find anything. Anyway, so looking at that, I just think it looked horrible. Um, and it doesn't, the function isn't great either, so great, I scrapped that and it was only a piece of cardboard. So next I went and got axe, well first I got this, this is the old handle for this axe um, and so what I came up with is this and it's really comfortable, I think it's like it's got the axe look I'm liking it. Basically, there's going to be some trade-off because you feel you're going to feel like you're too high off the board. <clears throat> so I'm considering taking a bit off this edge, but also I feel like the proportions are right at the moment, so I don't want to lose too much. And I can't find any more. Uh, our recycling's just been so. Uh, can't find any more cardboard, so I'm reluctant to cut this one down. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay, so my idea with this as well was actually just to use some cheap steel, and, or cheaper steel, but 
because of the size I've got this which is actually really expensive um, and I have put the blue layout fluid on so once I'm completely happy with this I might try and find some more cardboard and uh, try a few different things but once I'm completely happy with this I'll scribe it out and start cutting it out so uh, it's going to be a full town kitchen axe which I've not seen before so that'll be fun oh yeah and of course I said in my last video I said um, I was going to be finishing up these five knives <clears throat> that was going to be my aim Yeah, I don't know why I said that. Obviously, let's do something weird. Okay. So, first of all, this one, it was too round, um, the cutting edge, for my liking. And this was a mistake I made with a lot of early knives, um, with kitchen knives. Probably unique to kitchen knives, but... If you make too much of a curve in too short of a space, um, the rock that you have to do to get it to actually cut through something on the board uh, feels unnatural. And a lot of my first knives were like that. So if you look at a sort of standardish looking chef knife, it looks really curved but the reality is most of that curve is happening in the tip and the belly of the knife has a very minimal curve when I put that curve on here um, it's ruined the look for me and I still didn't feel very comfortable when trying to make a chop okay so scrap that one moved on to this one where I've sort of flared out the axe head a bit to make a bit more room uh, it's got a very similar curve still as a <coughs> western chef knife so yeah, I'm liking that one. Just to try, while I'm still in cardboard, I made the same one with a completely flat edge. And yeah, again, I'm, I don't really like the look of it, but more so, well, that might be better. Just full contact with the board. I think for most Western people, we're so used to having a bit of a curve on the blade that we our natural action is is a rock. Um, maybe not for people that are used to more Eastern knives, where you get these mega flat blades. Even with that, sometimes the tips rolled. So at the moment, I'm liking this one the best. And what you guys think um, I think the last thing I'll do is try ro just roll in the edges of these tips and see how that feels and then uh, make a choice but at the moment I'm liking this one ok so I tried rolling the edges of that final design didn't like it as much so I'm sticking with this middle design I will while I'm cutting it out and uh, grinding it down. I will like leave a bit of room especially on this edge and feel it out in the steel as well but I'm pretty happy. So next step the number of ways you can do this I've put the layout fluid on first and I've got a, a scribe 
I've got some magnets on to stick the cardboard down and I'm going to scribe around it. So other options are you could do something very similar without layout fluid on now and you could like spray paint um, on and maybe not use magnets you could uh, glue the template on. I've seen a lot of people doing that especially with but the templates in paper and you just glue the paper on and then you, you don't even really need to spray paint it you could just uh, grind and cut to the to the glued on template. Anyway this is my preferred way I'm going to scribe around and uh, yep yeah, so I'll do that and show you Okay, so I've scribed multiple times on all the lines, hopefully, and now I'll remove the magnets and the template. Okay, so on the camera it's not that obvious. In real life I can see them all. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, cool. So next thing I just remembered while I was doing that. This may well be too large for my kill. So uh, let's go and check. That's another good reason to have a physical template. Um, my kettle's just covered. Stop any dust getting on it while well, I'm not using it. Obviously, don't put sheets on it while it's hot. Okay. So. This is my homemade stand. Get out of there. Okay, yeah, it goes in. The edges are a bit closer to the ed the heating coils that I'd like than I'd like. Yeah, it doesn't. I normally put them in like that. Obviously, it doesn't go. So, I might just edit um, one of the other cardboard cutouts to see, but basically that will fit. Um, I can put some stuff underneath it to lift it up a bit. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be okay. I might try some stuff just before I cut it out. Obviously, I normally heat treat multiple blades at once. And they all stack in like that way. Um, also, got to remember this is stainless steel, so it's going to be foil wrapped. Like this expensive ass foil. So, it is actually going to be bigger than this as well. So, yeah. Definitely need to spend a little time just thinking about that before I cut it out. This is the design we were going with. I've just edited one of the other ones to have the same profile edge, but shorter. Still prefer the look of that one, but basically it still doesn't go in uh, that way. If we go in that way, 
there is allowance on each side for the, the foil so basically when you do the foil you have to get two folds in so it is a little bit of room could maybe have this a little bit bigger let's have a look at this one again this is the original one I think I might be able to make that work, even with the foil. Uh, this, you wouldn't even have to think about this with carbon steel. The only concern really would be getting too close to the coils. Uh, to have like uneven heating when you're doing your heat treatment. So, yeah, and the other option, I haven't got any. I've got ATP, which I use on the carbon steel. I haven't tried it on stainless steel, but there is another one. Is it called Condersal or something? I'm not sure. So the other option is to buy some of that, but I think it's about 60 quid a tin. Um, yeah, anyway, plenty to think about, and this is why I'm glad I do these cardboard cutouts before I've started actually cutting steel. So this was the design I had drawn out. Reduce the size of the head and now I've reduced the size of the handle to make it look more in proportion and uh, this is still a decent size handle but that was pretty chunky. So I actually prefer this a lot now. It, you're a lot closer to the chopping board. Feels more natural. It's a bit more dainty, and it just feels. It's still got that axe charm for me, but feels a bit more like it make a good kitchen now. So <coughs> turn the steel over, and more layout fluid, and go again. Obviously I steamed ahead a bit before, but this is why I do all this now. And this is going to fit nicely in there. It still won't go that way, but it's going to fit nicely in there with the foil wrap. So I don't need to buy any anything else. Cool. So I don't think I need to show me... Uh, scribing it out, we're going to do it exactly the same way and then um, we'll get cutting it out. So I'm happy with my design now. I uh, spent a lot of time thinking about different things as well, even taking the cardboard cut out to the grinder and just imagining how I'm going to grind the bevels and stuff just to make sure. Um, so yeah, angle grinder this piece of metal is so large I'm just going to cut off there and then maybe angle grind some more out but I've got the metal cutting bandsaw as well I'm not going to go at these lines I'm going to grind down to these lines with the belt grinder um, yeah, so that's next step
Okay, so obviously, well maybe not obviously, but I cut that out in a bit of a harder way than it needed to be. Um, but using the gr the angle grinder, you could have done it all on an angle grinder really. Um, I've used the bandsaw, the metal cutting bandsaw, and I've also used a Dremel with a metal cutting disc. So I'm fairly close to the profile to go to the grinder and I managed to salvage this and this in fairly big pieces which is why it wasn't the quickest way to do it or maybe the best way to do it. I got those little pieces as well which, which scrap but this you know I might be able to make a small um, like paring knife, not with a full tang handle, but maybe um, hidden tang. This I've got no idea, but you know, why waste it? Wonderful. So this just needs cleaning up, taken to near or to the final profile. And I'm going to go to the belt grinder using, well I've never done this design before but I'll probably use a bit of the flat pattern, various small wheels, just on an old worn 40 grip belt. And a quick tip, obviously these parts and no idea when I'll use them so write on them what they are and even this one I never know you know what might come up and I'll abandon this and you know it might be months until I get back to it hopefully not but you know just write on it what it is and then um, then you know Okay, so hopefully you got a good idea of what I was doing there. Things change on the grinder as well, so <coughs> these transitions uh, I did on my smallest wheel and it's just going to be a lot easier to do that, have a smooth rounder transition than the sort of um, right angle change that you'd get on an actual axe head. I'm not making wax, so kitchen wax. So yeah, it's pretty much there. It um, I've got to stop now, so I will refine this and probably go to a higher grip belt and refine it a bit more. Uh, I haven't done the edge yet. That's very rough. So we'll refine that too. And then yeah, so that's how I go from an idea in my head to starting to take shape in physical reality, um, refine it, map out the pins, and then I will heat treat this at full thickness, so yeah. Thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you very soon, I'm off to Solfest.